हेलो व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल जियाना होम ट्यूशन सो आई एम बैक अगेन टुडे आई एम बैक अगेन फॉर माय आईसीएससी स्टूडेंट्स क्लास नाइन विद द प्ले जूलियस सीजर एक्ट वन सीन टू सो लेट्स बिगिन एक्ट वन सीन टू टेक्स प्लेस इन रोम इन अ पब्लिक प्लेस दैट इज एट अ स्ट्रीट वेयर वी विल सी दैट a procession where caesar antony calphurnia portia cicero brutus cassia cassius and casca followed by a crowd of citizens and a soothsayer will be introduced so caesar who is julius caesar julius caesar is a roman general along with that we will also come across antony he is also referred as antonius mark antony or antonius and mark antony octavius caesar and lepidus they are the triumvirs triumvirs means government made by three men together see we have come across lal bal pal they were also the triumvirate of assertive nationalist just like that we will also see here triumvirs after caesar's death that is octavius caesar then marcus antonius or mark antony and lepidus we will also be introduced with calphurnia calphurnia is the wife of julius caesar portia wife of brutus then brutus cassius and casca brutus here Uh, although he is the conspirator one of the conspirator but he was a very good friend of julius caesar so cassius casca and brutus here are the conspirators against julius caesar so caesar here calphurnia casca peace how caesar speaks so now here we will see that caesar Antony, Calphurnia, Portia, Cicero, Brutus, Cassius, and Casca—they all enters in a procession, followed by a great crowd. Following among them a soothsayer as well. Now Caesar is calling out for Calphurnia. Calphurnia. Now Calphurnia, Casca here is making everybody silent. So Casca here is saying, "Peace." How Caesar speaks. so casca here is saying come on everybody silence caesar is going to speak so casca here gives importance to caesar so california here is saying california here here i'm here caesar here is saying california california here my lord so california is replying and saying yes here my lord i'm here so caesar here is now saying stand you directly in antonius way when he doth run his course antonius So Caesar here says to Calphurnia that Calphurnia you should not forget to stand in the way of Antonius when he runs the holy race. Now what is this holy race? So let's get back to the feast of Lupercal which we have already seen in act 1 scene 1. Now what is the feast of Lupercal? The feast of Lupercal is a Roman celebration. The feast celebrated fertility and include included a ritual foot race. so it was important for caesar because his wife calphurnia uh, was a barren woman so caesar told mark antony that is antonius to touch his wife while he runs in order to cure her of her infertility infertility so antony here replies caesar my lord so antony here says yes my lord so caesar here says forget not in your speed antonius to touch calphurnia for a elder say the baron touched in this holy chase shake of their sterile curse so caesar here reminds antony antonius that antonius you must not forget you must not forget to touch calphurnia as you run the holy race why because caesar seems to be here superstitious caesar here says that it is a elders belief that women affected with the curse of infertility becomes fertile and are able to bear child if 
touched by a runner during this holy race. So we here see Caesar to be a superstitious man. So Antony here replies and says to Caesar, I shall remember. So Antony here says, okay, fine, I shall remember it. When Caesar expresses any wish, it is to be immediately carried out. See this line, when Caesar says, do this, it is performed. So Antony here also is giving so much of importance to Caesar and Caesar's words. So Caesar here is saying, set on and leave no ceremony out. So Caesar here says that, come on, let us start the race. The ceremony should be completed with all formal observance. No details should be missed out. So now, immediately, a soothsayer calls out by the name of Caesar. Soothsayer here, Caesar! So Caesar here is surprised. Ha! Who calls? So Caesar here is saying, hey, well, who calls me? So Casca here is again trying to make the crowd silent. So Casca here is saying, come on, bid every noise be still, peace, peace yet again. So Casca here is saying, come on, let there be absolute silence. Silence, once again, silence. So Caesar here is saying, who is it in the press that calls on me? Press means crowd. Who is there in the crowd? I, sh I hear a tongue, shriller than all the music. Cry, Caesar, speak. Caesar is turned to hear. So Caesar here is saying, hey, who cried out my name from amongst the crowd? I heard a voice more shrill and loud than the sound made by the trumpets. Let him speak out now. And Caesar here is saying, see, I am ready to listen to him, whoever he might be. So Caesar here himself is giving importance to himself. So the soothsayer here says, beware the Ides of March. So the soothsayer here gives a warning to Julius Caesar. So Caesar here says, who is this man? So Brutus here says, a soothsayer bids you beware the Ides of March. So Brutus here repeats what the soothsayer says. So Brutus here says, the soothsayer is predicting that the 15th of March shall be a dangerous day for you. So Ides of March here means 15th March. So Caesar here says, set him before me. Let me see his face. So Caesar here says to Brutus, come on, bring this man in front of me. I just want to see his face. Cassius, fellow, come from the throng. Look upon Caesar. Throng means crowd. So, so Cassius here says, come on, fellow, please come here at once out of the crowd. Why? Because Caesar wishes to see you. So Caesar here says to the soothsayer, What says thou to me now? Speak once again. So Caesar here asks the soothsayer, What were you saying to me? Come on, repeat, repeat once again. So the soothsayer again repeats, Be careful, beware the Ides of March. Be careful, the 15th of March is full of dangers for you. So Caesar here says, He's a dreamer. Let us leave him pass. So Caesar... He just replies and says, he is just a daydreamer. We need not pay any attention towards his words. He is unworthy of it. Let us move. Come on, let us move forward. And then we see everybody leaves except Cassius and Brutus. So here we see that Caesar ignores the warning of the soothsayer. See, a few minutes back we have seen that he was very superstitious, especially when he said to Antonius, to touch his wife, California, in the holy race. But here, when the soothsayer gives him warning, he ignores the warning of the soothsayer. So, the first phase, we have seen that he was superstitious, but here we see that he is no, he is not superstitious. Actually, this part of his um, dialogue here highlights that he was very, very ambitious, over-ambitious, he was proud. He was going to be a tyrant. And that is what we will see in the later part of the scene and acts. So Cassius here is saying, will you go to see the order of the course? Now we will here see a conversation taking place between Cassius and Brutus. 
so everybody leaves except cassius and brutus so cassius here is asking to brutus are you not going to see the holy race so brutus here replies not i so brutus here says to cassius no 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 i am not going to see it so cassius here pleads brutus i pray you do so cassius here request brutus please you come with me so brutus here replies i am not game some i do lack some part of that quick spirit that is in antony let me not hinder cassius he desires i leave you so brutus here says to cassius well i am not very much attached to games and sports and i do not have a enthusiastic temperament like antony but let me not be an obstacle to your going if you want to go you may go cassius you may go and i shall bid goodbye to you but cassius here says to brutus brutus i do observe you now of late i have not from your eyes that gentleness and show of love as i as i was wont to have you bear too stubborn and too strange a hand over your friend that loves you so this is the first uh, what to say tactic that cassius is using to manipulate brutus so cassius here is saying oh well brutus well brutus i have been watching you minutely for some some time past so, and i am very sorry to say that i have not seen in your eyes the gentle love the gentle affection that you used to show towards me in the past so cassius here is saying i have love and respect for you brutus and i feel it is not good that you should treat me in such a harsh and in such a cold manner so cassius here is saying i didn't expect such a behavior from your side so brutus here is replying be not deceived that means please do not misunderstand me cassius if i have veiled my look i turn the trouble of my countenance merely upon myself vexed i am of late with passions of some difference conceptions only proper to myself which give some soil perhaps to my behavior and let not therefore my good friend be grieved among which number cassius be one nor construct any further my neglect so brutus here is saying to cassius that cassius please please don't misunderstand me so brutus here is saying that if at times i have not shown the same love the same affection towards you as before this is because i do not want to show to you uh, that i am extremely worried my friend cassius please try to understand me for some time now i have been thoroughly disturbed so brutus here is saying sharing his feelings to cassius that i have been thoroughly disturbed by some conflicting emotions and with some thoughts concerning some private matters that makes my behavior towards you little unusual little uh, little uh, unfriendly unfriendly so brutus here is saying that i do not want my friend you should feel angry for my behavior towards you so brutus here is also saying to cassius that cassius you know i consider you to be one of my dearest friend that poor brutus with himself at war forgets the shows of love to other men so brutus here is saying my friend cassius please don't interpret my change of manner i am disturbed i am distracted by my own troubles by my own thoughts i have sometimes forgotten to show this formal courtesies which are uh, this is because of the reason that i am little unusual towards you so please please do not misunderstand me then brutus i have much mistook your passion by means whereof this breast of mine had buried thoughts of great value were the cogitations tell me good brutus can you see your face so cassius here replies and is saying to brutus that yes brutus i am admitting that i have made a mistake as regards to the feelings with which you were influenced so this mistakes made by me has actually led me to keep to myself many thoughts and ideas of great value which should have been conveyed to you after that cassius here is asking to brutus come on brutus tell me one thing brutus is it possible for you to see your own face or in other words can you realize your own importance so brutus here is replying no cassius for the eye sees not itself 
but by reflection by some other things so brutus here is replying certainly not cassius because it is absolutely impossible for any one to see himself one can see one's image only when it is reflected from other object that is a mirror so cassius here is replying and saying it is just and it is very much lamented brutus that you have so much so uh, no such mirrors as will turn your hidden wordiness into your eye that you might see your shadow i have heard where many of the best respect in rome except immortal caesar mark immortal caesar speaking to brutus and groaning underneath his age oak have wished that noble brutus had his eyes so this is the part where again we see how cleverly how shrewdly cassius is trying to manipulate brutus because cassius knows that if he does not manipulate brutus then it will be hard for cassius uh, to actually stop caesar and his growing power so cassius here is saying to brutus yes brutus that is really true brutus and many romans regret that there is no such mirror as could truly reflect your image and also reveal your own nobility and worth to you so that you could know what you really are so see cassius is praising brutus lifting brutus high so cassius here is saying i have heard many highly dignified romans and then he remarks he except of course the god like caesar immortal caesar accepts immortal caesar so he here uh, makes a comment that except the god like caesar everybody everybody in rome roman every roman talks about brutus talking among themselves expressing sorrow tyranny and oppression under which rome groans at present time and genuinely wishing that noble brutus could see himself as other see him so brutus here is saying into what dangers would you lead me cassius that you would have to seek into myself for that which is not in me so brutus here is saying to cassius cassius i really do not know into what dangers you want you are trying to lead me cassius that you make believe make me believe to discover in me hidden qualities which in reality actually i lack completely so cassius here is again trying to manipulate brutus saying that therefore good brutus be prepared to hear and since you know you cannot see yourself so well as by reflection i you class will modestly discover to yourself that of yourself which you yet know not of and be not jealous on me gentle brutus where i a common laughter or did use to steal with ordinary oaths my love to every new protester if you know that you, i do fawn on men and hug them hard and after scandal them or if you know that i profess myself in banqueting to all the rout then hold me dangerous so cassius here very very shrewdly very cleverly again is trying to manipulate julius uh, brutus so cassius here is saying to brutus the brutus you actually do not know your own true worth come on listen to me you have already confessed to me that it is impossible for you to see yourself except with the help of some reflecting object that is mirror so cassius here is saying to brutus the brutus now let me act as your mirror so that i may be able to find i may be able to help you out to find your qualities so cassius here is saying to brutus that brutus let me act as your mirror and reveal to you without any overstatement whatsoever those qualities of you which have so far been quite hidden from you brutus so cassius here is saying the gentle brutus you please do not be suspicious about me see here this line and be not jealous on me jealous here means suspicious please do not suspect me cassius here is saying to brutus and you should not misunderstand me as well 
and then here cassius is trying to actually explain his own character that he is a very good man so how is how is he trying to ex actually explain brutus that he is not exaggerating he is not boasting he is telling the truth so here cassius here is saying to brutus that if i were a man of light heart if i was fond of laughter and i had the habit of swearing eternal friendship i had the habit to say everybody that i love you i had the habit to flatter had the habit of spreading rumors as soon as they turned their backs on so cassius here is saying that if i were known to be in the habit of professing friendship to every companion then you may truly consider me as a dangerous man and unworthy of trust in short cassius here is trying to explain brutus or trying to instigate brutus by making brutus understand that i am not a boastful man i am not a man Uh, that not to be unworthy that means i am not an unworthy man i am not a dangerous man i am your good friend and so i am trying to help you out to discern or discover your inner qualities because all the people of rome are actually seeing you to be a very dignified man a patriotic type of a man you are a highly dignified roman according to the people of rome so Cassius is trying to help out Brutus to discern his own abilities his own potentialities his own qualities and why is Cassius doing so Cassius is doing so just to manipulate Brutus and bring Brutus to his side so that with the help of Brutus he may be able to assassinate Caesar which we are going to see in the later part of the scene and act so this is the explanation of part 1 we have stopped here we will be continuing the second part in my second video so please keep watching my video like share and subscribe to my channel thank you for watching